In today's tutorial, we're going to practice how to color a water scene with markers. These are four drawings I will work through in this tutorial. You can find the timestamp in the description box. Each of them, I will start with a light pencil sketch, then trace it with a pen. I will mainly talk about the coloring technique during my first drawing. I will provide the art supply list in the description box. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. If you are following along with this tutorial, for the first two drawings, we will do quick sketch to practice how to color the water. I won't draw many details on the surrounding object. A few tips for drawing with a pen before we dive into the coloring details. To create the illusion of distance, use thick lines to draw objects in the foreground. Objects in the background will have thin lines and less details. So I will only draw squiggly lines to simplify all trees in the background. I will increase the line weight for the pool and the stone texture in the foreground. While I'm drawing the outline, let's talk about what I will mainly focus on when I color the water. Here's a picture I found online. Two things I will focus on are the reflection of the surrounding object and the light reflection. Sometimes there will be shadows, depends on where the light source is from. When you are coloring the water, by having a contrast between the reflection and the light reflection, you will be able to roughly create a water texture. To make our drawing process easy, the key is to simplify everything. When the water surface is not smooth, the reflection of the object will have a wobbly shape. So we will use some horizontal lines to simplify its shape. Make sure you have at least two shades of markers to get started. Now we can color the pool. Color the edge first to prevent later your color exceeding your outline. Also, the edge is darker because of shadows or reflections. Then we will only use horizontal strokes to color the entire pool. Make sure your speed is fairly fast and try to lift your marker a little bit, so you can draw a crisp line and get a lighter shade of this color. Here I'm saving a white space as a light reflection. You can turn your paper to an angle that allows you to draw a straight line better. Here I will only draw reflections of the three trees in the background. Now we have the base color. Before I use other dark color to draw the reflection, I will use the same light color first to test what strokes or shapes I will draw. Since our goal here is not to create a realistic drawing, we can simplify the shape of the reflection. If you want to add more details, you can add the color of the object on top of the reflection. For example, here you can add a little bit green. I recommend to use a color pencil. The contrast here is not strong enough. Wait the first layer of ink to dry, then use the same marker to repeat previous steps to add a darker value. Here I'm using the first light shade of blue again, but applying more pressures on the paper to blend the color. It will add a darker value while creating a slightly color gradient. I like using the pen to draw a few lines to add some layers. Once the ink is dry, I feel like there's still no strong contrast between the dark value and the light value. So I use the third shade of blue to make the reflection darker. 
Here I added the vertical lines on the edge of the pool to make it look more three-dimensional. Before I add it, it looked flat and you cannot quite tell if it's a vertical surface or not. Oftentimes, when drawing or coloring a vertical surface, use vertical lines or strokes can add depth to your drawing. The last step is using the gel pen to add a few highlights, then the coloring for this pool is done. I'm going to add some details to the foreground to create more depth in this drawing. When you are ready, you can fast forward to the next practice. Here is the final look of this drawing. The second practice is a rectangular pool. You can simply draw a one point perspective rectangle to practice coloring the water. The coloring technique here is same with the last drawing we did. The only difference here is I used a yellow marker to draw the light that is reflected on the water. I should have drawn the reflection of the house as well, but sometimes depends on the lighting and which angle you are looking at the water. You may not see the house very well, so I just skipped it.
When you want to draw a perfect straight line, I recommend use a thick paper or the cardboard paper, such as the back cover of your sketchbook, as your ruler, so the ink won't smudge. For this practice, we're going to draw a lake. You can simply start it by drawing an organic shape, then add some mountains in the background, then draw trees wherever you like. I have a few tutorials showing how to draw different kinds of tree with markers. I will put a link on the right corner. My paper size is 11 by 14 inch, so each of them is a small drawing. I like doing small size marker sketches because it's very relaxing and it won't cost too much of my marker's ink. I used the Bristol paper in this video. Compared to the mixed media paper I used in my previous tutorial, the mixed media paper can create a nice and subtle texture. Bristol paper has a smoother finish so the ink will flow easily. You can try different types of paper to see which one works best for you. I normally use 0.5mm micron pen to draw the outline. Sometimes I might switch to 0.2 or 0.3 for small details. If you want to learn how to draw pine trees with markers, I have a tutorial for you. I will put a link here. In my previous videos, I talked about use different types of marks to simulate tree leaves. For trees in the background, I often just draw scribble lines to simplify its form, instead of using detailed pointy marks.
The coloring technique for this tree is simple. Start with a light green to color the whole tree. Then use a dark green to draw a few strokes on one side of the tree to add depth. Even though this drawing is small, it's still good to pay attention to small details. To create more depth and layers, make sure most of the objects you draw have at least two shades of value. Here I'm using a vibrant green to color the grass in the foreground. Use saturated colors in the foreground and less saturated colors in the background is one of the ways to create the illusion of distance. The coloring steps here are the same with the first pool we did. Make sure you leave a couple white space to show the bright light reflections. You can blend some green colors into the reflection of the tree to add layers to it. I wanted the focal point of this drawing to be the lake, so I didn't color the dark. I used the green gray marker to color the mountain because I don't want it draws too much attention.
One of the reasons I don't use Bristol paper often for marker sketching is because the color will become much lighter after the ink is dry. But on the mixed media paper, it doesn't change that much. So here I'm trying to go over this reflection again to make it darker. For the last practice, we're going to draw a garden pond. The coloring technique here is still the same with all three drawings we did before. One thing I haven't talked much in all of my tutorial is how to draw rocks. I will try to make a full tutorial later, but here let's briefly talk about it. One of the easy ways to draw a rock is making sure you draw three sides of surface. Here I used this cube as an example. It has three shades of value, which are light, mid-tone, and core shadow. If you can draw this cube, then you can draw an irregular shape of block. To make it look more like a rock, you will use more line segment to draw each side. Here I did a simple example. You can see each rock I have drawn three sides, but some edges have more line segment instead of just one straight line. You can use the thickness of the line and the shade of the color to create the illusion of the three-dimensionality. When I use markers to color the rock, I often use vertical strokes on the side surface. Use horizontal strokes on the top. I hope these tips may be helpful for you. I will talk more details in my future tutorials. Here I'm drawing the small waterfall. You can draw it like you are drawing the hair. Later when we color it, we will leave the waterfall and the water splash white. The rest of this tutorial will be the full process of how I did this drawing. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoy watching this tutorial and have learned something. If you have any questions, feel free to leave comments. I will see you in the next tutorial.